Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my videos. My name is Maureen Palmersheim. I'm writing a book called Modern Legend and it's about a girl, Lane, who goes uh, into her imagination into these uh, ancient myths and legends and um, basically they empower her to change her life. So I used a lot of anachronism in my writing and that's where um, you take things out of sequence so um, change up the cr chronology of uh, people, places, and events especially uh, from, from the past and um, one example of this, uh, P Pablo Picasso um, did his art piece called The Rape of the Sabine Women and um, he uses ancient mythology here uh, to describe what is going on in current events so back when he did it in 1962 it was the Cuban Missile Crisis and he wanted to depict um, the state's power over the individual. So uh, I also employ anachronism in my writing and um, I take the Romulus and Remus myth about the founding of Rome and uh, Maka's curse or the curse of the Ulsterman from Celtic mythology and I kind of intertwine those two together in my story. Uh, the reason I do this is because uh, of the similarities I see between the two myths. So in um, Maka's curse, which I've talked about a lot in my other videos, basically Maka is um, she dies in childbirth uh, at Navin, Navin Fort in Ireland um, after outrunning the horses and um, the twins that she gives birth to before she perishes on the hill uh, you know they are rejected by the Ulstermen because they think that they're um, cursed, like witches' children, so um, in the Romulus and Remus myth, which is totally different from uh, about the foundings of ancient Rome, um, it starts out with the twins Romulus and Remus and they're motherless, uh, just found in a basket um, by the river and picked up by a she-wolf um, and basically raised and nursed by the by the she-wolf so um, I just pick up where one myth leaves off and kind of go into the next one and um, I guess we'll uh, Pablo Picasso um, talked about the state's power over the individual. My story is more the individual's power over himself and his own circumstances. So the real, or how he's depicted, the real Romulus is um, like especially in the rape of the Sabine women um supposedly after he um like gets the founding of rome going they're mostly men in the village and they don't have enough women to you know continue the population so what ends up happening is he and his men um do sort of a surprise attack and attack and uh, take over the Sabines and uh, 
take their wives. <laughs> so, uh, in my version, it's a little different. So, in my version, Romulus is uh, sort of insecure, full of self-doubt, and he's um, he has great ideas and imagination about his dream of like envisioning a city, uh, an empire, and everyone thinks he's crazy and his family doesn't get it and um, also he's gay <laughs> in my version so he's really like the black sheep of his family and um, Lane, my main character, she's just observing him as a sheep in the story. She's kind of following him around like she's his um, Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> and uh, she sees a lot of similarities between him and her. So uh, as he's able to gain empowerment and, um, you know, become who he's supposed to become, Lane is also able to realize her higher self and who she's supposed to be. So, um, Lane likes stories from ancient Ireland because oftentimes the hero goes into the underworld or the she, uh, pronounced are spelled out S-I-D-H and um, I think we can all agree that we have an underworld inside of us uh, and so usually the warriors, the heroes that go into the Shi, they come out different people and they come out different places so that's what she wants is to go into this other world where she does a lot of self-reflection uh, through the various myths that are playing out and she's able to transform her life for the better. <laughs> so that is what I have for you guys today. Um, see you in another video next Wednesday. Bye!